everybody, it's Lon Seidman with another retro review. Today we're taking a look at a neat little device that my wife actually had, which I was surprised about when she moved in. Uh, this is the Genesis CDX. This was a portable uh, Genesis system that uh, it really wasn't made or designed to be run with batteries, but it was uh, portable in the sense that it was a lot smaller than uh, the old Sega Genesis and uh, combination CD-ROM. As you can see behind me, the other one is pretty big, and when you added on all that other stuff to it, it really got rather large and kind of crazy with all the wires and everything. So Sega came out with this little guy in, I think, 1993, uh, and this tried to consolidate the Sega CD with the cartridge-based system into something a lot smaller. And as you can see here, it kind of fits in your, the palm of your hand. It has a built-in CD-ROM drive here, so you can put your uh, Sega CD games in here as well as audio CDs and play them. It also has on the back a cartridge slot. I'm leaving my Altered Beast cartridge in here because it doesn't seem to work every time I put it in. So uh, we're going to just boot this up so you can see how it works. Uh, interestingly enough, they also had a little battery compartment here for uh, loading in AA batteries. And you couldn't play games with it like this, but you, you could use the CD player component. So this was probably a little bit larger than uh, some of the disc mans that were out there, the portable CD players at the time. But uh, it did uh, give you that ability to use it like a, a disc man where you could load in a CD, a music CD, uh, and have it play audio uh, through the headphone jack here. And uh, you wouldn't be able to use any of the gaming or the video systems, but uh, you could, again, play music on there. On the bottom, not much uh, but beyond the label. Um, on the front, you had uh, controller ports for two controllers, and I believe it came with the uh, six-button controller, which was uh, a little bit of a revision from the original three-button that came out. Uh, then on the back, you have your power adapter, and on the other side, uh, the AV cables. So uh, we're going to fire it up real quick. This is pretty uneventful, and it's just like any other Sega that you've used before. So you just push the power button uh, in the center, and uh, here we go. An Altered Beast is uh, up and running. So nothing too spectacular or exciting there. Uh, if you take the, uh, the cartridge out, and let's just uh, switch it off here. Uh, take the cartridge out, it'll go into CD mode. And it works, again, just very much similar to how the original Sega CD works. So uh, if I uh, just uh, pop it on there, you can see we've got uh, the Sega CD uh, thing working here and it's looking for a game. So maybe we'll put in uh, one of the games we found in the library here. This is a, a, a golf, well, it's a packaging is for the golf game, but I actually have Sewer Shark, which I think came with my original Sega CD when I got it back in 94, 93 or something like that. Uh, these were the cases that came in. They were pretty large at the time. So uh, all you had to do was just uh, hit the open here, uh, put the disc in. And I believe what will happen is, yep, it's starting to check the disc and uh, it'll load up our game here. So we get a little confirmation in Sonic waving his little finger at us and it will boot up Sewer Shark. Sewer Shark was one of those games that uh, was kind of uh, one of these heavily video intensive games. It didn't always look that great on the Genesis as you'll see here as this loads up. You know, a lot of, um, you know, it didn't have a lot of colors to play with. So uh, it was really not the most attractive thing in the world. And this game was something where you used to drive around in a, like some kind of sewer thing and try to stop these like these monsters from taking over your sewer. So, you know, it's a problem that a lot of people have, so it's good that you have a sewer shark to take care of it. Um, the, uh, I, I actually had an idea for a game, like back when I was in elementary school, I wanted to make a game that was pretty much the same thing, where you had a, you have to go through and clean out a sewer. Um, unfortunately, I never learned enough programming skills to do that. But you can see the video is really tiny and uh, very much dithered because there was a very limited color set that you could work with. But uh, the CDX actually made a lot more sense as a system because it was so small uh, and it didn't require all, all these cables because on the old Sega CD, uh, you had to map the, the cables through um, the Sega CD and then back out to the television. And then if you added on, and I'm going to show you this in a second, the 32X add-on, uh, there was even more cables to run in, in a bunch of different directions which really got pretty, uh, pretty painful after a while. So let's see if we can... Uh, see what happens here. I think we already got eaten here. There's not a lot of interaction with the game, um, but uh, here, here we go. So you just kind of use this thing and point your, your little crosshair and shoot uh, shoot the animals, and that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, how that works. So uh, pretty cool there. Now this is the, um, uh, the Sega 32X add-on, and this was something that it was kind of odd. Sega went through this really tough period of time where they were just releasing all this stuff and trying to like get ahead of the 32-bit revolution as it were to occur. Uh, so this was kind of like a, a, a stopgap and it introduced additional hardware. I think it has two 32-bit processors on board. Uh, basically a way to try to get better graphical uh, horsepower into the Sega Genesis system at the time. And unfortunately, people knew that they had another system coming out called the, uh, the Saturn. Uh, so they were kind of waiting on doing anything more with it because they didn't want to uh, invest in a platform and then have to reinvest again. And this thing was over the 32X 
I think was over $100 at the time. So it was not an inexpensive add-on. I bought this for 20 bucks like in 1997 when they were liquidating them. So to use the 32X, you had to run some cables through. Now it's a little bit easier with the CDX because uh, we have the Sega CD already integrated, but on the original, with the original Sega Genesis, you had to do a lot more wiring. But in our case, it's going to be pretty simple. So all we're gonna do here is connect our AV out to the AV out here. So let me just make sure I get this lined up correctly. And that'll plug in there. And then there was, a, there was a bunch of cables that it came with. And if you lost these cables, you're really pretty much out of luck. Um, they, they're hard to find now. And I know a lot of people probably have this system but can't hook it up because they're lacking the cables. So I was lucky enough to find this in a bin of stuff that I had left over at my mother's house. And I found it and a couple weeks ago and I was so excited because I could actually hook it up again. So, uh, so basically what it just does is it kind of acts as a, as a pass-through uh, for the uh, for the 32X. And there's been a lot of questions as to whether or not the 32X works with the CDX. And it does, in fact, work. And it doesn't really fit all that nicely, as you can see. Um, and when it came, when you got the 32X, it came with all these metal, um, these little metal pieces you had to put in for probably for FCC compliance on noise and everything. So uh, this is probably not an FCC compliant uh, setup, but it will work. So uh, we've got that installed there. I do have a 32X game here, an original. This is uh, Star Wars. So I'm going to put that in, on top of the 32X and we're gonna switch this on and hopefully we'll see something work here. Yep, and I think we are good to go. Now this thing makes a lot of noise um, while it's going. And the other problem I have with it is my particular 32X has a tremendous amount of video noise when it's operating. And it's kind of a disappointment because it's never worked right. It's always been, uh, had some really noisy video. Even on like old televisions, it was pretty noisy. It actually doesn't look too bad at the moment, but you can see like there's um, a lot of like lines in the thing and everything else and it really didn't uh, work all that great but you can just get a sense as to what uh, the 32X was accomplished or was capable of accomplishing as far as your uh, gaming was concerned so we'll let that run here and uh, this was kind of like an X-Wing game um, and you know when you think about it the graphics don't look all that great by 2014 standards but uh, when you think about uh, you know playing these games back in the day this was actually pretty good so um, as you can see here, we're flying around, I think, in an asteroid belt, and there's going to be TIE fighters attacking us. So, um, But you get a sense as to what the 32X could do. You couldn't do this on a, on a regular Genesis. This added a lot of uh, 3D capabilities, but it also used the Genesis hardware uh, to map some of the 2D components. So I think if, um, if, I'm, if my memory serves me correctly, uh, the cockpit graphics are the Genesis itself generating uh, the imagery, and the 3D things here where we have, uh, we'll just kind of move closer to one of these asteroids. These asteroids are being rendered and the TIE fighters are being rendered uh, by the 32X add-on. So, uh, but the frame rate was actually not bad considering uh, all, of, all the things that had to work right to get here. Uh, there was also a, uh, oh here's an opportunity, um, there was also a, uh, uh, a, a bunch of CD games that used the Sega CD and the 32X so you could really get uh, all out with all of your crazy Sega hardware. But, um, but it's pretty cool and the fact that the 32X works with it is really nice especially because uh, my, my wife would like me not to be taking up too much room in the house with all of my retro gaming collection. So I was really happy that she had one of these. She didn't even realize what she had until she said, hey, do you think anybody would find this interesting? And I said, oh yeah, this is really interesting. This is a great little uh, add-on to the collection. So, so that is it. We're going to take uh, another look in another video at one of those flash cartridges that I reviewed before. This one's called the Mega EverDrive, and we're going to load this thing up with the Sega 32X so you can see uh, what some newer hardware, th this cartridge, will do on some of this old stuff. This is Lon Sivan, and thanks for watching.